This next question comes under the topic of mechanics, so let's have a look at the details together. A six kilogram mass at A, so there it is, hanging suspended, is held in equilibrium by two strings, AB and AC. AB is attached to the wall and is horizontal, so you can see it going there off to the left. AC is attached to the ceiling and makes an angle of theta with the horizontal. So there it is there, let me just mark that in a little more clearly. The tension in AC is twice the tension in AB, so there's more pulling in this direction than in this direction. Assume a gravitational acceleration G of 10 meters per second per second. Okay, part one, find the value of theta. Part two, calculate the tensions in the strings. Answer correct to one decimal place. All right, so how do we go about this? Now, the first thing to say um, before I start showing you my solution is that the very first thing I'm going to do is something that very few students did, which was ultra disappointing, and that is to draw a very simple force resolution diagram. Uh, maybe you feel like, wow, this diagram is so yeah, sufficiently simple that I don't need a, a special uh, additional diagram of my own to show what's going on, and I would respectfully disagree, which is shown by the students who perhaps um, got confused with the different uh, angles and how they're related to the sides using sine instead of cosine because you mixed up adjacent and hypotenuse or adjacent and opposite. Um, these are all classic things that can be very easily uh, addressed and avoided by drawing just even a simple diagram. Okay, so let's have a look at how we might draw a diagram together. So this is uh, question two and we're in part A. All right, so we can see here, um, when we have a look at this diagram, right, there's these three sort of uh, things pulling in different directions, but I want to take um, each of them and make sure I resolve their forces so they can be dealt with in separate ways. So um, the easiest force to have a look at is just the gravitational force or the acceleration due to gravity. So I'm gonna draw that as uh, from the particle and heading down. Now remember, the question says it's a six kilogram mass and gravity is 10 meters per second per second. So therefore in terms of Newtons, um, I'm gonna say, well, that's six times 10, right? It's mass times acceleration. So that six times 10 gives me 60 Newtons going in the downward direction. And then when I can say, oh, look, there's this AB, which is going horizontally towards the wall, right? Um, there's gonna be some other tension in that, uh, draw a straight line like that, that's a bit better. Um, that's going off at some particular tension that I don't know, so I'm just gonna call it T. Remember, part two of this question is actually to find out what that tension is. And then lastly, um, I've got this tension um, from the ceiling um, rope or string or whatever, <laughs> whatever material it is, um, and it's headed off at a funny angle, and so therefore I'm gonna draw that funny angle in, but I need to resolve that, right? So therefore, here it goes off at its, um, oopsie daisy, here it goes off at its funny angle, but I want you to remember that I've actually got this um, angle measured from the horizontal up here in the um, up here in this top corner. So you can call that an angle of depression um, because you're looking from the horizontal downward. Now, one of the things hopefully you remember is that alternate angles are equal on parallel lines. So therefore, an angle of depression is the same as the corresponding angle of elevation, which is looking from the bottom vantage point looking up. So therefore, if I were to try and resolve this into two components, if I have this kind of uh, sort of horizontal component here, I don't know why that's sort of a bit wavy, or uh, a bit, there we go. Why wasn't I just using a straight line? Uh, you can see here, um, this is the horizontal component of this, right? It is a, a horizontal line, so I can measure this theta um, from the horizontal and measure upwards, so that's the angle of elevation. Uh, and then I also have this corresponding vertical part here, uh, and it's going to be sort of, you can see there's a, you know, a 90 minus theta or a uh, pi on two minus theta in here, which is corresponding, okay? Now, what I do know is that this whole, you know, um, rope that's going to the ceiling, it has, going back to the question, uh, twice the tension than the horizontal one. The tension in AC is twice the tension in AB. So if I call this over here T, that means that this diagonal up here is two going off in that direction. So this is gonna be important because it forms the hypotenuse of this, um, you know, this, this particular side that I have here. So I'm going to complete some of the triangles here and you can see I've got a slightly different color here just so you can distinguish. 
So um, with these right angled triangles that I have just formed, um, I can do a bit of basic trigonometry um, and I can also use that to reason through what is going on here, right? Now, if you have a look at this uh, triangle here, this triangle here, um, you can see that this uh, this line here is of course parallel to this one here uh, and the reason why this is important is because even though this is not a good representation of where the force is because it's acting on the particle itself, it's equal in magnitude and direction. So therefore in vector terms, you know, finding out what this is will give me the same as what this is, right? So therefore if I look in this triangle here, um, you can see that I can just use simple right angle triangle trig and say, well, um, since A is in equilibrium, right, um, I can uh, say that these two forces, the horizontal one this way and the horizontal force that way, they're gonna be the same. And also, um, this force vertically and this force um, from gravity, which is also vertical, will be the same. So that's gonna be my reasoning through this, okay? So now that I've got my force diagram, uh, I'm gonna say, well, um, if you have a look at, at this diagram here, um, cos theta is going to be this adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, right? So if I call this x because it's a horizontal length, right? Cos theta um, is equal to x on 2t. So therefore just x by itself will be equal to 2t times cos theta. Um, and like I said, because these two things are gonna be balanced with each other, that will allow me to eliminate what this t is and I am gonna solve for theta. And that's really what my goal is in part one. So let's write that down, part one, I can say since A is in equilibrium, or equilibrious if you like adjectives, um, the horizontal forces are balanced. So once I've balanced those horizontal forces, I can equate the things from the horizontal rope and also from the horizontal component of the, the roof, the ceiling rope. So horizontal forces are balanced. So therefore I can say, 2t cos theta, which is what I got from that right hand um, force, and then uh, t, which is what I get from that left hand force, they're gonna be equal to each other. I can divide through by t because it's just, uh, it's a non-zero quantity, so you're not dividing by zero, which is good. And while I'm dividing by t, I'm also gonna divide by two, because that's gonna give me cos theta on its own, which is one over two. And theta therefore, noting that theta has to be acute because have a look at where it's positioned in a right angle triangle. Since theta has to be acute, the angle that I'm gonna be interested that gives cos, um, to be a half is gonna be pi on three, let's stay in radians, okay? And I'll reason that that's because theta is acute. So, uh, that was part one. I've found the value of theta and I'm gonna use that for part two. I'm trying to now evaluate what the tensions in the strings are. Now you can see here, as I've just used the horizontal forces, what they've done is, because the, the horizontal forces both have T in them, um, they cancel, right? I'm going to need to appeal to other knowledge to work out what T is, um, because you can see here, I've kind of exhausted this option and solving here eliminates T out of it, right? So I, I need something which can I can equate, which doesn't eliminate T once I sort of write the equation together. And you can see, right, I've already done the horizontal resolution of forces, I'm now gonna do the vertical resolution of forces. And hopefully it doesn't take too much reasoning to see, as I was kind of highlighting before, that this um, length up here, let's put that in the same color that I used here, this length here in this right angle triangle, just like I had 2t cos theta before, this vertical length is 2t sine theta because it is opposite here and then there's the hypotenuse. So if this is 2t sine theta, so is this, which is the force that's actually act, um, acting on the particle. So um, similarly, I can say, just like I made this argument with the horizontal forces, um, the vertical forces are balanced because we're in equilibrium. So now I'm going to equate, um, therefore, 2t sine theta is going to be equivalent to the uh, 60 newtons of force that are coming from gravity, right? So at this point here, um, you can see I, I'm trying to uh, evaluate this for t, like I'm trying to make t the subject. So therefore I'm going to, um, I guess I can divide both sides by two. Uh, and while I'm at it, I actually know what theta is because I worked it out in the previous part. It's pi on three. So therefore I'm going to write t times sine times sine pi on three, and that's gonna be equal to 30 newtons, because I also divided by two. Last I checked, sine pi on three is root three on two, so t 
is going to be, uh, I might as well, yeah, I'll, I'll multiply through. This is two on root three times 30 newtons. Uh, and so T is just going to be equal to, if you just sort of cancel through, and I can also um, rationalize the denominator here, that's going to be 20 root 3 newtons by the sounds of it. And what I, I noticed from the question is it says answer correct to one decimal place, so it wants me to approximate. So therefore I can say um, this T represents, if you go back to my diagram, this represents the horizontal um, tension here. So um, it's a string, I do remember. So therefore um, tension in string AB is equal to this 20 root 3 newtons, but I want that to one decimal place, uh, which I think you'll find if you evaluate because um, root, root 3 is like 1.7-ish, um, you're going to get uh, 34.6 newtons. And I also know that the tension in the other string is double this, right? So I'm going to take that 20 root 3 number, double it, give me 40 root 3. Um, so tension in string AB is 34.6 newtons, and in string AC is, and when you double that, just be careful, um, don't like round off early, you actually get 69.3 newtons, and that's all to one decimal place. Okay, so that was that mechanics question.